Hi, I'm Larry London. This is Border Crossings. And on today's show, we shine the Music Alley spotlight on one of music's pioneers, a founding member of two successful folk rock bands from the past five decades. Richie Fure helped form the band Buffalo Springfield back in the 1960s. And then he went on to create Poco, who are credited for paving the way for the Eagles. Richie stops by the Border Crossing studio to talk about the reunion of both bands and his latest CD, which has recently topped the Americana charts. Richie Ferre joins us on today's Border Crossings. My name is Larry London. Welcome to Border Crossings. And today in our studios, we have a music pioneer, a man who's been writing and performing songs since the 1960s and 70s. He's still performing today. All the way in D.C. on VOA TV, we welcome Richie Fure to our program. Thanks, Larry. So good to be here with you. It's an honor to have you in the studios, and your roots are are pretty deep in rock and roll music. You were a writer, performer, and founding member of Buffalo Springfield. Correct. That is correct. Buffalo Springfield. Poco, Poco and too. Souther I mean, Hillman Fure Band, and yep, but yep, pioneered Buffalo Springfield back in 1965. Now, how did this all get started for you? I mean, what made you decide music was the direction you wanted to head? Interestingly enough, it was watching the Ozzy and Harriet television show, and I saw Ricky Nelson, and uh, he was singing over the crib one day to a baby called Bebop Baby, and then the next thing you know, they're on the stage at the high school auditorium, and it was like, oh, my gosh, I got to do this. That was that was really the bug right there. That, that's what got me. It's usually the girls. Yeah, know. well, it was just like watching Ricky, though. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you're a great songwriter, too. Obviously, you've written some big hits for both Poco, Buffalo Springfield, and for yourself. The, the songwriting, which came first? Was it the writing or the singing part that you discovered first? It was definitely the singing. And mm-hmm. then the, you know, the writing part of it came in definitely a little bit later. Mm-hmm. And so how, you know, here's a big question for you right off the bat. I mean, how have the changes in music affected what you do? I mean, there's been many since you started in the 60s. So today we're in a very different kind of a medium and it's done differently, produced differently. Songs are created differently. You doing it the same way? You know, I do. I still do it the same way. I'll get an idea in my head, and maybe I just sing along, or just know a, uh, you know, this lyric just keeps going over in my head, and then all of a sudden I'll find a, a little melody that goes with it. Lots of times, a, a verse or a chorus and the melody come together first, and I got to work on the rest of the song as it comes out. But, you know, it's it's still the same process for me. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I don't I don't change. It's like uh, I pioneered a certain kind of music, and that's basically what happened. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you've had a few big hits over yeah. the years. Yeah. Did you know they were going to be hits when you wrote them? Is that something you can tell or, or no? <laughs> I just write a song. You just write you a know, song. You know, and what happens to it really depends upon the people that are listening and buying the music and, and doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Were there a few that you've written that you thought would be big hits and then yes. disappointment? Did I you... certainly thought a song with Poco called Good Feeling to Know was going to be a, mm-hmm. a, a huge monster. And, um, you know, it, it really didn't uh, take off the way that I thought it was going to, but sometimes that happens too. Mm-hmm. I got one right now that's really moving. and I'm, Yes, yeah, congratulations. Excited. Thank you very much. Yeah. You've got a After new album. After all these years. <laughs> yeah, hand in Hand is, yeah. is number one yeah. on the Americana charts. Yeah, well, it's number one most added right now. Yes. Wow, that's fantastic. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. You know, it's really it's really sweet but i guess as you've been a seasoned musician doing this for song it's not you're you're not after number ones are you i mean is that's that's the goals change you know you play the music and and you hope that i mean you know when, when you pour your heart out into the music you you hope that it will resonate with enough people that it touches their heart as well you know i mean i'm just i i i get the opportunity i've been very blessed to just be able to write music and and um i share my life through my uh through my music Music and I hope that it resonates with people's, uh, you know, when they hear it with mm-hmm. their heart. Well, we're glad you're in our studio. Thank you. And Larry. we have a lot of ground to cover, but I'm going to ask you to do a song if you wouldn't mind. Great. Well, I tell you what I'd probably like to do is just play uh, the single off of this brand new uh, CD that's called Hand in Hand. But the song is called We Were the Dreamers, and it's really the story of Poco. The story it, of Poco. It, it tells it tells the story from getting that group started and going all the way uh, all the way through. So I'll, I'll, I'll give that one a shot. Right, okay. Chief Fure is here on the Voice of America. Country guitars 
was having fun Richie Thank Fure you. here on Border Crossings on the Voice of America, Rednecking Heroes. There you go, and hippies. man. Hippies. I Rednecking love it. hippies. They uh, I love it. didn't get on that same stage back in <laughs> 1969, but our hope was that one day they wouldn't. And a few did get it. Waylon Jennings, <laughs> Willie, Willie Nelson, and a couple guys like that. Yeah, they got it. Wow. You're, you know, <laughs> it's great to have somebody with all the, the background that you have and all the depth in music that you, you've had. Now, why did you wait so long to put out an album? Why did this one take this long well um you know the, the last one i did was in uh, 206 and um you know I, I pretty much thought you know maybe things were done right. and then uh, stephen stills and neil young and i got together with uh, uh joe vitale and rick rosas and we did a the buffalo springfield did a reunion mm -hmm. and um during that time all these creative you know the creative juices just started flowing again when we were doing rehearsals you know i'd come up with a little lick or something and neil would look over and say, new song huh and I, yeah new song and 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 bingo you know when uh when we got finished uh with with our little tour i had i had these bits and pieces of lyrics and then uh musical ideas and all of a sudden it just there, there were there were songs there and i felt i had something special with the songs that i'd written i i don't know what it was but it just felt i mean every every album you know it's like your kids you know you think you 
this is the greatest, and then you get another one, right. you know? <laughs> well, here they come, you know? And uh, so yeah, I, I really felt, though, there was something special about this CD hand in hand. Mm. And so, when you reunite with the older band, uh -huh. Can you imagine Careful the 40 how you years? Use that word old, man. With the seasoned guys, <laughs> with the veterans. Does it, I mean, it's hard to believe 40 years has gone by in a blink. Goodness sakes. I mean, Time yeah. flies. Yeah, it does. And when you're making rock and roll music and having fun. No doubt about it. But that's it. not the only thing you've done. You, for a little while, you were into the ministry. Yeah, still and, am. And, and making uh, religious music, secular I've music. I've made two devotional, I like to call them devotional CDs. They're, mm -hmm. they're not really, uh, some of them are worship songs on them, but some of them are song songs. And uh, so, yeah, um, I, I've made a couple of those over, that was actually the first recording that I did in 1996, um, you know, when I went back into the studio, because there's been a couple of times when I thought, well, I'm done. I'm done making music. And then bingo, something happens. And then, you know, like with the, the Springfield, you know, something happened, you know, so it was good. But um, still pastor of church back in Colorado. Wow. A man of yeah. many, many hats. Yeah, many. You're doing yeah. different things, yeah. a lot of different things. But uh, being on the road, still enjoyable or is it, it, you know? It is. And I'll tell you why it's enjoyable. I have a great band that plays with me and has learned 40 years of my music. And I'm just really thrilled with them. Uh, all also, one of the things, Larry, that makes it real special is that my uh, lead guitar player and uh, songwriting partner on some things, you know, his son plays bass in the band with us, and my daughter uh, sings with us in the band. So that really makes it, it really makes it special when you have your family mm -hmm. um, traveling around with you. Now, we've, you know, gotten a few emails. I mentioned that you were coming on the show, and people wanted me to ask about the origin of the names, Buffalo Springfield. Poco. Sure. I mean, how you guys came up, these, you know, they're very interesting names. Certainly Buffalo Springfield. Yeah. Where's that originally Well, from? Buffalo Springfield came about. Um, uh, Stephen and I lived on a, in a little house on Fountain Avenue in Los Angeles, and right outside the door, there was a steamroller that was working on the road out there, and it was a Buffalo Springfield steamroller. And, of course, one of the signs on that tractor came into our house. We set it on the mantle. That looks like a good name for a band. I didn't know that the Springfield was nine miles from my hometown. I grew up in Yellow Springs, Ohio, and I had no idea that the Springfield was the uh, hmm. was the Springfield. But uh, it was so cool that um, the company was pretty much disbanded uh, at the time, you know, or, or certainly they were uh, being absorbed by Harvester International. And they wrote us a letter and they said, so good to see the name out there again, you know, and they were real happy with it. <laughs> Quite the opposite with Poco. Hmm. Poco started out as Pogo, Pogo, mm -hmm. and um, we were we, we had established a, a, an audience there in Los Angeles, and people were following us around. We went up to Santa Barbara to play a show, and all of a sudden, this guy came up during our sound check and handed us a stack of papers about that big, and uh -oh. they were from Walt Kelly, <laughs> who did the comic strip character, and he said. No, mm -hmm. get out of my tree. You can't be you can't be you can't be using that name. And so we took the little line off the G and it became Poco and it was probably the best thing that happened to the band because Poco is really who we were. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm sure, you know, that that one of the best things among the many that you've had had to be uh, being inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Ah, very sweet. You know when your peers uh uh, acknowledge you and the music that you've made and the music that you've created and and they say um, you know you, you're deserving of this award it was it was humbling very humbling now we're going to ask you to do another song if that'd be sure. all right that would be love just to hear fine. some more music love hearing your voice i mean you know today we don't have enough guitar oriented music yeah. there's just not enough of it you yeah. know all the pop stuff has gone in other directions well you're hearing it as it was written i'll tell you that because <laughs> i'm used to playing with a band kind of covers up all of the mistakes you know that you do but uh um how about I sing this song for you that I wrote for my wife? Uh, we've been married for 48 years now. Wow. And I wrote this for my wife back in 1967 when we got married. And um, it, it was probably one of my most um, famous, you know, Buffalo Springfield songs and also recorded with Poco. That is called Kind Woman. I got a good reason for loving you It's an old-fashioned sign I 
kind of get to feeling like an ageless old rhyme Nowadays you know the saying depends so much on the kind of woman that you find Beautiful sound. Thank you. Richie Furey is here on uh, Border Crossings. Uh, did you play that for Nancy when you first wrote it? Did you ask her, what do you think of this song? I no, wrote for you? I surprised her with it. <laughs> uh-huh. And she loved it then. And she, does yeah. she still enjoy it when you play yeah, it today? she does. She really does. When she comes to the shows that we do, uh, you know, I think, you know, I mean, there's a certain rapport that we got going on there. And, and I think she says, awesome. Pretty so what's cool. the secret to making a marriage last 48 years? It's very simple. Communication. That's it. Huh? That's the advice. Communicate. Talking. The minute you stop talking, it's like any other relationship. If you're in business, if you're in a rock and roll band, if uh, if you're a nation, mm-hmm. when you stop talking, <laughs> right. you know, things go haywire. That's and, right. And uh, so here we are, you know, 48 years later. And, and you know, you learn to uh, you, you learn to uh, roll with the punches. You learn to forgive, um, you know, but it's, it's communication. It's talking and never forgetting to let them know. I love you. Mm. Well, you that's know? amazing. And, it, you know, what a it, you know profound meaning to learning how to keep a relationship going. And in this business, in rock and roll, it's not easy to do. I don't know of too many people that are starting into their 49th year of marriage, you know, I mean, that have come <laughs> along. And But you know what? Nancy and I have been blessed in mm-hmm. that regard. You know, there's no doubt about it because we had our struggles. Right. At three and at seven years, you know, into the marriage, we definitely hit some bumps mm-hmm. in the road that we had to learn how to, to work through if it was going to it was going to go. Mm-hmm. And people would ask then what happened to the bands? If the you could make a marriage work, I mean it takes the whole band yeah. obviously and now that two of them came and went, but they're back yeah. together from time to time. Yeah. You're, you're back with Poco and also Buffalo Springfield yeah, we, from time Yeah, we've to time. done both. So, you know, at the time, I think, you know, people, um, you know, everybody has to be on board, um, you know, and, and if somebody has a mindset, you know, that they're off in another direction for a while, 
you know, then, you know, you got to understand that they have their free will to make the choices whether they want to, you know, make it go or not. And, you know, I mean, all of us have left bands at various times. And Mm -hmm. the thing that's really cool, though, Larry, is that we still remain friends. That's great. After all of these years with the bands I've played with and some of the guys I've played with have gone on to very, very successful rock and roll careers. You know, I started off in some different directions, which, you know, I mean, who would who knows what would have happened had I just really stayed focused on music. But, you know, my family uh, really became a, a very big priority in my life that, you know, if I never made it or wrote another song or recorded another song, if I had my family, that was what was really important to me. Well, that's great with yeah. roots in, in bands like Poco and Buffalo Springfield. Sure. And, of course, you've worked with Randy Mize, you've worked with America, with Linda Ronstadt. Yeah. And the list goes on. It you've goes been with all the giants yeah. over the over the years. And so here we are today. And yeah. when you write songs, do you write the, the, the lyrics or the melody first? What, which well, lots of times, you know, as I, as I said before, sometimes I'll just be walking down the road and I'll, and, and I'll start thinking of a lyric and open my mouth and out comes, this, nobody's around, but <laughs> nobody's around when I'm doing this, though, you know, and out, out comes a little melody. And, and, and if I can remember to hum that, you know, by the time I get back to the house or something, you know, to put it down, then, then I put it down. But um, it, like... I wrote a song for my youngest daughter who does sing with me now, and I wrote these set of lyrics for her 10-year, I mean, for actually for her wedding, and I couldn't find music to go with it. So 10 years later, it had to become a, uh, a 10-year anniversary song. So sometimes, you know, the pieces don't all come together until years later, and you got to be patient, and I had to wait on it. <laughs> what is it that keeps you going? What is the driving force? You, you had mentioned you took a break for a while. Yeah. The creative juices started again. You don't need to keep working as hard as you do. So what is it that keeps you going? It, it, it's just the joy of the music and the fans. You know, there there are more fans out there than I realized, and certainly with, with, with the way... The, the internet is today people can really stay in touch with you but when you get a chance to take the music and you can still see the people that enjoy the music there are, there needs to be music for 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 my generation you know i mm-hmm. mean you know kids come along and i was a kid and i wrote music at, at that stage in my life too but to now i think to see people that are, that are my age that can relate to that but then i can also offer them new songs as well right you know and then see their response to it you know, it's, it's just satisfying, you know. And you, you're in the Americana format, which yeah. is a great format really, that, yeah. that appeals to all ages. And I think we started that years ago as yes. well, you know. Yeah. yeah. Back in the day when we didn't have labels for formats. That's right. You just made music. Yeah. Music was music. <laughs> Richie Fure is here. It's uh, Border Crossings on the Voice of America. And here's a question I have to ask. Um, in, the, in the era of Battle of the Bands, which radio stations have, the different Battle of the Bands, Buffalo Springfield, Poco, who wins the Battle of the Bands? Oh, my goodness. You know, that's like asking, you know, which one of your kids do you like the most? Well, which one do you like the most, Richie? Uh, They're they're all equal, and they are all on an equal basis, you know. And, you know, the Buffalo Springfield certainly gave us a a launching pad to to move out from. Poco, we were pioneers. We set the course for groups like the Eagles, you know, that came along later on. And um, so, you know, I I can't really say what was what, you know. It was just a matter of... uh, it was one was the extension of another as long as I was a part of it you know I just brought what I had to offer along to it yeah. well you're a, you know an inspiration to many singer songwriter you know we don't see a lot of those anymore so yeah. and you write really songs and lyrics with meaning thank you and uh, so uh, the new album is called hand in hand yep. number one and yeah. uh, so congratulations on thank that thank you so much people want to get a copy of it where do they go? How do well, they get it? Other than uh, iTunes and Amazon, can they get it from your they website? They can get it through my website, richiefure.com. Go visit me there. They can talk to me on Facebook, and I'll drive them to the to the website where the music is. Sure, absolutely. Are you doing much international touring? Are you thinking about going Well, we, we went to Japan. My band, RFB, went to Japan two years ago, and hopefully we're going to get to spread out and go to other parts of the world. You know, the pe- it's amazing. You got fans there. It was so cool. I mean, when we were in Japan, people were singing my I mean they were mouthing the lyrics from the audience and it was like this is really too cool and then you go up to say hi to them you know and they don't speak English you right. know <laughs> konnichiwa <laughs> <laughs> well you know you've arrived yeah. when they know your song yeah. lyrics and, and it is in their language very so that's cool. amazing yeah. Richie Fure on uh, Border Crossings I'll ask you to do one more song if that'd be okay thank you very much I'd like to do another song from the from the new CD it's called Someday and right. it's a reflective song you know about you know years ago and today 
I like, you know, I like to start it out in one place and bring it up to date. So All right. This is, and, and Keb Mo actually oh, played Keb on Mo, this yeah. particular song. <laughs> he was uh, recording in a, in a studio across the hall from us, and he kept coming in and said, man, I got to play on this song. I, I love this song. I got to play on this song. So I thought, all right, man, we're going to find a spot for you on this song. So it's called Someday. Someday down the road when we look back on where we've been. Someday when we're older, I don't know exactly when. Someday down the road, all we needed was a place to start. Someday down the road, when we look back on where we've been. Someday when we're older, I don't know exactly when. And I remember when I first saw you standing there, it's a still frame in my mind. I couldn't say a word. Oh. And I swear my heart stopped beating for time. When I finally caught my breath, all that I heard was my heart pounding, but not a word. Someday down the road, when we look back on where we've been, someday. And I've been thinking a lot about life and love and things I had a lot on my mind these days Troubled days Yeah And baby It sure is good to have you here Just to know Not a single day, not on my own. Someday down the road when we look back on where we've been. Someday when we're older, I don't know exactly when. I will see it in your eyes. You will know it's in my heart. Someday down the road, all we need was a place. Today, yesterday seems like a long time ago, and there's a tear in my eye. I hardly recognize the things that I used to know. So there's a tear. My eyes. Someday down the road when we look back on where we've been Someday when we're older I don't know exactly when I will see it in your eyes You will know my heart Someday down the road All we need was a place to start Richie Fure here on Border Crossings. Do you remember where you were when you heard your music on the radio for the first time? 
No. <laughs> I, don't re- I wasn't in an elevator. I wasn't in a supermarket. I'm not sure where I was, but probably in the, probably in the car, you know, driving someplace. Yeah, well, yeah. as a man with uh, all of the hits and the, uh, the <laughs> credentials that you bring to the table, uh, you know, definitely you've influenced a lot of musicians. Now, with what you've learned over four decades mm-hmm. of music, what would you tell people? What, would, what advice would you offer? Well, um, I'd say just tr- stay true to your heart. You know, it's like people always want you to be like somebody else. And I was very fortunate in my career to have been an innovator and a creator in all the bands that I was in that I hadn't, you know, it wasn't like, I want you to sound like this guy or be like that group or do that. We we were innovators, and I think people have to stay true to their heart with the music that they're creating. And that's, you know... Well, and don't let it go up here. Don't, you know, the, the good press and the bad press. Mm-hmm. You know, bad press can bring you down. Good press can bring you up. No, nah, man, just stay, stay with it, you know. Do you think the music business is, is a better place to be today or back when you first entered? <sighs> Golly, I don't know. I mean, it seems like it's always, you know, there's always some genesis to it. You know, it's mm-hmm. always a beginning again, beginning right, again, right. you know. and. So I really don't know what to say. Singles you know, are coming it's, back. It's different. Why, well, yeah. <laughs> In the form of iTunes and things like sure, that. But absolutely. everybody's getting yeah. one song now yeah. these days. Well, it's a pleasure to talk to you. And, Thanks, and, and Larry. Nice to meet you. And if people want to get the album, where do they go? Yeah, again? they can go to richiefure.com, R-I-C-H-I-E-F-U-R-A-Y.com. They can go to my website, Amazon.com, iTunes. It's uh, it's all it's it's all over, man. Thanks to E1. Well, yeah. they pick up a copy of Hand in Hand. Thank you, Richie Fure, Thank you for so joining much, us. Larry. This is Border Crossings. I'm Larry London, and you are watching VOA TV.